Okay, I want to continue with our discussion in process, about processing. Now, what I'm going to do right here in this video is I'm going to de deviate a bit from uh, just following the book, which is what I have been doing. Uh, and I'm going to branch out and do a few things uh, out of order, if you like, uh, and that these are, these are discussed in the book, but not at this point in the book. But I'm going to talk about them uh, because they're very important and very useful. And for an example that I want to present um, soon, uh, they're needed to understand some of the details of this example. Now, there are several concepts here represented in just this few lines of code. And uh, I, uh, I hope and believe that they, they should be uh, fairly understandable. And uh, so let's see. Um, now, we've talked about variables. And we can define variables using the integer statement. So we can say uh, integer x uh, equals 5, for example. And it defines the variable x as an integer variable and gives it the value of 5. Or we can just say integer x, uh, which doesn't put a value in x, but defines it to be an integer variable. Now, the first thing I want to discuss is illustrated right in the very first line of this sketch. And it's an array. And I'm going to set up an array of integers. Now, an array is um, a set of numbers. It's not just a single number or a single value. And um, uh, this is just extremely useful in all sorts of coding to have these arrays. Now, we can think of is that every number in an array is referred to using the same name. Well, we differentiate between the numbers by assigning them uh, an index or indices. Now, let me explain this. I'm going to set up a, an array of integers. So I, this statement right here, integer, tells me that it's going to be an integer array. And by putting the square brackets like this right after integer, um, telling the, the uh, computer that there will be an array. I'm defining the name of the array to be numbers. So every element of the array will be referred to using the term numbers. And then this actually sets up the array for the computer. Integer numbers equals new integer 6. So this is saying it's an array that hasn't been defined before. And it's an integer array. And there are six elements in the array. Now, in processing, like in a number of computer languages, uh, the, uh, the indices are, in fact, numbers. So if we had numbers 1 in square brackets, that would refer to the element of the array that has index 1. And the, uh, the very first element of an array in processing has index 0. So numbers, as an array with six elements, these six numbers are going to have the indices 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Those are six numbers. Uh, now, you will no doubt make an error um, from time to time where you'll think that the index 6 is in an array uh, that is defined to have six elements. But index 6 would actually be the seventh element of the array. So you'll make that mistake several times if you continue to use processing or similar computer languages. Not all computer languages have the first element of an array uh, with index 0. Some of them, uh, like Fortran, uh, the f it, when you set up an array, the index of the first element of the array is index 1. OK, so but in processing, the first element is index 0. So here we define an array that has six elements. 
and the name of the array is numbers. Now I'm going to define what all those six elements are using this for loop. So let's look at this for loop. For uh, integer i, i will determine the index of the element, and i goes from 0, and we're going to uh, the conditional uh, statement in the for loop will be we'll do the for loop as long as i is less than this numbers dot length. Now numbers dot dot length is a number that is associated with the array numbers and it's how many elements are in the array. So here we said there are six elements in the array so numbers dot length is an array I mean is a number associated with the array that we're calling numbers and its length or the number of elements in the array. So as long as i is less than 6 here, uh, the, the for loop will continue to execute. And then f the final increment where we do i++, plus plus, which means we replace i by the value i plus 1, if you recall. So this is our for loop statement. And um, and then we execute. This is the single line that we execute in the for loop. And this will be the second new concept uh, in this short sketch, where we define the element of numbers with index i. It will be the integer random 1 comma 61. Now, random is a built-in function in processing which generates a random number. And in this case, the random number will be any number between 1 and 61 inclusive. So whenever we call random, it will generate a number, an integer, integer. So whatever goes into i will be what is produced by this function random. Okay, so we're putting random numbers into the six elements of the array, also called numbers. Now, I want to look at what these numbers are. So in order to do that, I just write, put the line outside of the for loop, print line numbers. Okay, now let me, uh, let me just comment out these statements right here for now. I'll get to those in a moment. Okay, there. So, after I've generated random numbers and put them in the array numbers, um, I'm going to print out those six random numbers. And then after I print out the six random numbers, I'm just going to print out again the individual element of the array with index 2. So it will be numbers array index 2 that gets printed out. Okay, so let's check this out then. Let me, let me run the sketch. And notice that our sketch box comes up, but we're not drawing anything. Okay, so this is our array numbers with index 0, index 1, index 2, and so on. So index 0 has the number 16 in it. Now remember, all of these numbers have to be a number between 1 and 61, inclusive. So second element is index 4, third element, index 2. Um, now, it's, uh, it's a point of political uh, debate among computer scientists. Uh, whether the first element of the array should have index 0 or index 1. So people will argue with that, like political parties argue. Uh, so first element is index 0, second element is index 1, and, and, uh, and so on. So we go all the way down. The sixth element is index 5. And then I am printing out um, the second element of the array numbers 
I mean, I'm sorry, not the second element, the index number two, which is the third element. And notice index number two, the third element, has value 50, which is in fact what has been printed out right here. Now, I uh, hope you recall here that print line is the statement that prints out whatever we're putting inside the parentheses, but it prints it out on a new line. If we just put print without print line, ln, it would continue to print along the same line like that. So we're printing out the third element in the array here at the very end, 50. OK, so far. Now let me take out these comment statements. And the next thing I want to show you is sorting. And sorting is a critically important operation uh, in many, many uh, pieces of computer code. And uh, it's used all the time. It's used in Excel sorting in that when we put, we put a list in alphabetical order, that's sorting. Putting them in numerical order clearly is sorting. So sorting is something that we do all the time in computer code, going from smallest to largest, largest to smallest, or however we choose to do it. And there are a number of different ways of doing sorting. In this course, we're not talking about the ways of doing sorting. We're just going to sort. And there's a built-in function in processing that does sorting. And that's this right here. Numbers equals sort numbers. So we have the array numbers. And when we call the function sort right here, what sort does is it takes all the elements in array and rearranges them from smallest to largest. So the first element in the array is replaced by the smallest element of numbers. The second element in the new sorted array is the second smallest, and so on. So it sorts them in place, in other words, we don't need to generate a new array, but we could. We could generate another array, give it a different name, and I'll show you that in a minute. Now, we, so after the numbers are sorted, I'm going to print them out. Now, but before I print them out, I'm, I'm going to print on a new line uh, the word now sorted, and then here I print out the new sorted array. So let's run this right here. Okay, we got our box, and then here, okay, so here is our initially unsorted array. Notice these numbers are now different than the previous numbers we got. We're printing out the third element in the array is 42, which it is right there. Then we sort them, print out now sorted, and now this new array in numbers should have values sorted from smallest up to largest. And that's what exactly seems to be happening. Now this is putting the sorted values back into the same array numbers. But if we wanted to, we could put them into a new array. So let me do that. Let me up here uh, put integer, open close brackets, and I'll put sorted like that, and then I'll put, that's all. I'm not going to assign any values. And there, I do that. Now, I'm going to put sorted here. So now, all these sorted values for numbers should now go in the new array, sorted. So let's run it now. Now, uh, so numbers will remain unchanged. It will be the original random array because we're not putting the new sorted array back into numbers. So let's first look at that. So, okay, so here's what I have. 51, 52, 55, the, these are the original unsorted. 
even though right here they're looking like they're sorted, but boom, this saves us. We see we go 32, 29, 27. We print out the third element, which indeed is 55. And now I'm saying now sorted, but it's not. We get, we get the same array back, 51, 52, 55, and so on. So if I wanted to print out the sorted array, I would type in here sorted like that. So this prints out this array, which is now the sorted array. And let's check this. Here's our new 24, 25, 18, 32. Here's a third element in the array. And here's our new sorted array, 18, 24, 25, 32, 45, 54, which is sorted. OK, so I hope you see that. Um, and uh, so I've, we've looked at a number of concepts here. Let me put this back to numbers. And put this back to numbers. And let me just take this out. There. Okay. Make sure it still runs. Okay. Now, so a number of new concepts. Uh, an array. What is an array? We're using the for loop, which is what we've been talking about this week. Um, Print line, we've done that before. We're doing sorting using a built-in processing program and uh, discussing how the indices are defined in processing. So there's a lot here. And um, I wanted to do this because um, probably in my next video, I'm going to discuss this particular sketch. Well, that seems like a long, complicated thing. It's, let's say, m m modestly long, actually. And this is a piece of code that I wrote uh, several years ago, which does a game. And so this is, I want to talk a little bit about this next time. Okay, so see you next time.